Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 16, Epilogue, Guy Crimson, Part 3. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the Tensura Light Novel. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. He waited for Rudra to get better so that the fight could continue as planned. But there was no way to know what would happen. So, Guy and Rudra fought many more times after this. Rudra was strong enough to be the hero he called himself. Rudra the Awakened Hero, and Guy the Awakened Demon Lord. The technically brilliant Rudra, and the guy who fights with power and talent. Although it's difficult to win or lose when you're evenly matched, it's only natural that Guy would gradually gain the upper hand. There were three women, staring blankly at the battle between the two males. Lucia and Velgrind, and Velzard, the white ice dragon. At first Velzard was not very interested, but as the duels became more and more heated, she gradually became interested in watching them. Geez, Guy seems to be getting stronger again. Yes, sister, but Rudra isn't behind either. Yeah, it makes you wonder if he's human or not. I'm sure, he's strong. Of course, Rudra is a disciple of elder brother, and has been given the ultimate skill, and will get stronger. Oh, I can see why, then he'll believe it. For me, it's best if no one gets hurt. Like this, there was great harmony among the onlookers. The tea is ready. The winner will be decided soon, so Lord Guy and Lord Rudra's share is ready. Misery and Rain are in charge of serving everyone. It wasn't clear when this had become a daily thing. On another day, there was a quarrel between sisters that even made one forget about the duel. Velzard was on good terms with Velgrind, but occasionally disagreed about the direction of education. Their newly born brother, Veldora, the storm dragon, seems to be very capricious and goes around uncontrollably. As for the reason for the march, she's too strict. Why can't he get more special treatment? What are you talking about? I value little Veldora and dote on him. I've had to clean him up a couple of times to make him more steady and mature. The phrase, clean him up, by Velzard is a ridiculous method of physical removing Veldora and forcing reincarnation. Velgrind didn't like that. I'm telling you that you're all wrong. You have to tell him what you want, but you can't hurt him. You can't help it if he can't manage the situation, so this is how to get the kid to understand us better. Really, as always, the little Velgrind is too mild. If that's the case, why don't we just beat the crap out of him from now on so he can learn more? Not that, I mean, caress him more gently, teach him hand on hand how to live in the city in human form, and how to fight. Little Velgrind, I think it's better to say you're too spoiled rather than sweet. This practice will spoil the child too much and make him a loser, and if this continues, the young man named Rudra will become a loser too. No way, Rudra is my best partner. Therefore, as long as I educate Veldora, he will grow into a good brother who knows how to respect his sister, so leave it to me this time. Hey, no, I can't do that. I can educate him better. Instead, I should have been doing it all along. Don't be ridiculous. You're saying that I can't handle it, aren't you? I get to go this time. On one side, Velzard was too harsh, and on the other, Velgrind was too soft, so they shifted blame on each other. Guy didn't think either side was doing too well. Relaxation is the best. The dragon sisters don't even understand the word, relaxation. The unspoken, dumbfounded guy. Hey, hey, that's not our duel. Well, it's better not to get involved with the girls who are fighting for Veldora. Guy and Rudra, fled for refuge to stay out of it. When Guy and Rudra dueled, Velzard and the girls would come to maintain the barriers, and when they quarreled, Guy and them would have to maintain the barriers themselves. If not, the continent would sink. Guy and Rudra wanted to fight where they wouldn't get in trouble, despite the fact that they were accustomed to doing so. The man who looks into the mirror can see what is good and what is bad, it should be said that Guy was treating them as if they had nothing to do with him. But one day. You're back? Shut up. The duel will not end until I wins. A duel between two people is as common as a greeting these days. The battle began as usual and ended when the pair were exhausted. Because it's always a draw, as is customary, the bickering starts again. You claim to be fair and square, but aren't you just plain filthy? Guy mentioned that Rudra was filthy. It's not unusual to set up the holy barrier to reduce Guy's power to an abnormal state at the moment you start a duel. Guy would not identify any traps until the duel began, and it was this character of Guy's that Rudra saw through to exploit. As long as it's won, it's justice. Nope, as long as it doesn't win, it's not righteous. Therefore, I will win no matter what. You're kidding. I don't care if you do, but at least don't say it out loud. Are you kidding me? 
you're the one who's kidding. Isn't that the same trick you used just now that I used before? How many years do you think it took me to learn that trick? Secret technique to change the subject. Avoiding accountability by subtly deflecting the topic like this is one of Rudra's must-kill techniques. Rudra had always been educated by the kings and so excelled at such ingenious speaking skills. Remember it was three weeks? Yes, even Lord Veldanava complimented him. It is you who is despicable for stealing other people's tricks, Rudra keeps saying this, actually for a reason. This was due to Rudra's anxiety. His ability is still good, but recently he's been feeling a bit squeezed down lately. This was something Rudra felt more clearly than anyone else, and he felt in his heart that it would not be good if this continued. I would have done the same if I had fought in a straightforward manner and won. As Rudra said, the more you fight, the stronger you get. It's not just about acquiring the ultimate skill, it's about being skilled enough to use it to its true value. Guy learned this by fighting Rudra. Now he was using the sword to fight with Rudra, and even then Guy was beginning to gain the upper hand, and on that basis there was no doubt that Guy could win with skill and magic. Yet Guy did not do so. Not knowing when, he became expecting the duel to end in a tie. It was for this reason that Guy welcomed Rudra's little gimmick. But nowadays, even that is only a matter of time. Thus, Guy asked out of the mouth. Hey, why didn't you all kill me the first time you battled me? You may have succeeded in killing me if you hadn't named me at the time, don't you think? This is exactly the point of puzzlement that Guy couldn't understand. Guy is self-respecting and prideful, and usually would never agree that there is a possibility of losing, and for a spiritual being, agreement is tantamount to losing. So all this time, Guy didn't want to think about it. He didn't think he was being sympathetically discharged, nor did he want to be. Guy has the king of pride, and Rudra has the king of justice. If Rudra doesn't skimp on using the power to attack at full strength in the first place, it's not clear where the win or loss goes to. To the earnestly inquiring Guy, Rudra smiled and said, Oh, that's it. You're such an <laughs> there's no point in beating you. You have to recognize my greatness and become a companion. Huh? Unable to understand, Guy couldn't help but ask rhetorically. I am the man who will conquer the world one day. This was my pact with the star dragon, Veldanava, who was also my mentor and friend. Guy knew that Rudra was a disciple of Veldanava, himself, and he had not the slightest doubt about it. But he hadn't really expected that Rudra would have ambitions to conquer the world. I say, from Veldanava, it's my job to stop fools like you from conquering the world. I know, it is for this reason that Veldanava made me find a way to get your approval. Hearing that, Guy thought to himself. Veldanava, you gave up on the hassle and simply forced it on me. That's the answer. Tell him what is reality. Guy seemed to hear Veldanava speak so. Guy had no choice to, to stay with him until he realized he liked Rudra. It's more of a story, because if he didn't like him, he would have killed him from the start. Yeah, this guy is a real <laughs> Well, the truth is. I couldn't control the King of Justice with all my might in the first battle, and in fact, I can only do it for a few dozen seconds now. Huh? It can't be just that, can it? No, it's true, for this power is something I have borrowed from Veldanava. Rudra shrugged and started talking. Guy heard Rudra's story and felt it was inconsequential, but he was impressed by Rudra's power. It's not surprising that Veldanava's power was a part of his power. However, after listening to Rudra's narration, he realized there was a misunderstanding. It's actually a secret, just for you to know. My skill is the Covenant King Uriel, and I have found the ultimate skill through my beliefs, my vow to unify the world, and the thoughts of my partners who have responded. In spite of his ability, Veldanava actually helped. Even so, it is quite amazing that the King of Covenant, that arises from the concretization of Rudra's heart as of a higher power in the angelic system. Next came the King of Justice, borrowed in the form of an exchange, and this too was difficult to deal with. I have the King of Covenant, and have the power to break evil and protect it. But what the King of Justice has is the inexorable power of domination. It is not too much to say that the one who can control the skill and borrow the power from the one who is controlled is the most suitable power for the king to rule. However, with no one under domination at the moment, the threat is not so great, and with such a state to be able to compete evenly with Guy, Rudra was really strong. That's pretty awesome. Guy said so. As the number of dominators increases and the powers available to use increase, then Rudra will also become more powerful. What the heck? I thought the continuation of mutual strength would create a great difference that would be sure to be a victory for me. Looks like it can still be enjoyed. Looks like the fun will continue. Realizing this, Guy became very happy. I am not interested in dominating others, but if I were a man, I should have won by my own strength alone.
However, there are circumstances when the situation prevents me from saying that. Circumstances? Ah, you are also a friend of Veldanova and should have the right to know. Hearing him say that made Guy feel uneasy. Since Veldanova was a long-lived species, he didn't particularly care that he hadn't been seeing him lately. Did something happen to that guy? It was supposed to be a happy thing. Hum? My sister, Lucia, and that guy were together. It's called a marriage. They are now a true family because Lucia is pregnant with Veldanova's child. You said child? The true dragon? It is truly quite a story. But it is indeed possible to do such a thing if one possesses the whimsy of getting rid of the incompleteness of the quest of all become one. Anything can happen. Well, if that's all, then a blessing is enough. But the problem is from here. After Rudra had finished the premise, the facts laid out next made it impossible to stop with mere consternation, and even Guy couldn't help but stand up and keep asking Rudra. Veldanava had become nearly indistinguishable from humans. He is also claimed to have chuckled and informed Rudra that he now had to cope with a lifespan that he had never had to. It was too much of a truth to keep in Rudra's mind. It's really that Guy's style, so what should we do now? I don't know, so I was worried, but I'm sure I can't just play with you. Yeah, both of them had to look at each other and sigh at the same time. 